everybody, Cardinal Timothy Dolan here, and welcome to my house here behind St. Patrick's Cathedral. And I'm especially happy because I'm here with my uh, good friend, Rabbi Noah Marins. Welcome, welcome. This isn't his first time here, and something tells me it won't be his last time here, and I enjoy that because we're good friends. Although I gotta be honest with you, what we're talking about this morning is less than pleasant. And that's the undeniably uh, outrageous rise in uh, anti-Semitism. Actually, Rabbi Marins, of hate crimes, of which anti-Semitism would be one of the oldest and one of the more numerous. So look, we're, we're practical guys. You and I are pastors, we're with our people. And we, and we hear our people say, somebody's gotta do something. And, and we say, where's the outrage? Where's the outrage? These are vicious, uh, these are, 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 are vitriolic, these are hateful episodes of baiting and attacking and harassing, and somebody's gotta say, um, uh, enough, and we're better than that. So, uh, and Owen, thanks for the opportunity just to weigh in. What do you think, what do you read would, would be the best for us to do? Well, first of all, we're grateful that our dear friends are speaking out and that they recognize the enormity of the situation that has been building up over years. Right, so. Let's remember that it was just a few years ago when Jews were mowed down in prayer at a synagogue in Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. And there's a whole series of these, but there's something more brazen about this moment. Yeah. It's becoming more visible. It's no longer one lone demented person. It seems to be more common. It seems to be a bit more provoked. I don't want to say accepted, but the outrage is less than I would expect. And that's why I ask with you what the AJC asks, where is the outrage? I want you to hear from your Catholic family that we're outraged, okay? We are, we are outraged. Uh, against the hatred against the Jews. And I wonder, I wonder, uh, Rabbi Marins, I, I was mentioned to you, I was on a very enlightening call this morning with the Consul General of Israel. And I mentioned to him, I said, the Consul General, thanks for asking our input here. He more briefed us about the situation in the Middle East, but then he said, I think an uh, unfortunate sequel to this is that it has exacerbated the already rising attacks on Jews throughout the world. And I said to him, you know, Consul General, we appreciate this sensitizing because we are extraordinarily proud of the, of the friendship, the trust, the working together that the ecumenical and interreligious community have in New York. And we got to be, not only then do we need, need to raise our voices in outrage, but we need to be a light to the world. We need for the rest of the world to say, look at New York. They get along. Well, darn it, these, are, th these obnoxious things are giving our enemies ammo to say, no, they're not getting along. And, and we can't let that happen. It is an opportunity for us to build upon the revolution in Catholic Jewish relations mm -hmm. in which we were not always the best of friends. You got it. And we turned it around and we are a role model to the world that people can respect one another, can appreciate one another, that there's absolutely no room for violence or vitriol that instigates. I mean, we saw something in the last week that I thought I would never see. A brazen attack on a yarmulke wearing young man in Times Square, it was a miracle that he walked away and from he that. escaped, yeah. It was nothing worse, it was nothing more than raw uh, mob violence, you know it? Yeah. It was pogrom-like. Yeah, it really was. Now, we learn, Catholics and Jews, we're people of history, and we've learned the hard way. I often hear you, Rabbi Marin, say how you learn the hard way, that if you're silent in the face of these attacks, haha, <laughs> thinking it might go away if you ignore it, it's only gonna get worse. We have learned the hard way that, uh, some, that, that sadly, we often stood by and didn't say anything, and mea culpa, sometimes we've been part of it in the past, 
Okay, we've had to admit that with immense contrition, which I think has has led to the the and enhanced the sincerity of the friendship that we now have. So we both learn from that that you can't just be duct taped. You got to speak out, and our people expect us to, and we don't want to let them down. And we've just got to. I think that's part of our role to be prophets, right? Well, I think the Catholic Church has role modeled this. Mm -hmm. I in, hope so. In recent years, first of all, His Holiness Pope Francis has been extremely outspoken has about this topic, calling it a sin, calling it ridiculous. How could a Christian yeah. whose, Jew, whose roots are in Judaism be anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic? Yeah. Just yesterday, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops came out with a very strong statement, oh, well, know. which yeah. cited Nostra Aetate. Yes the uh, document that transformed the Catholic Church's view of Jews and Judaism in 1965. And now here in New York, the Cardinal of New York, the Archbishop of New York, who is in the community with the largest Jewish representation the of the diaspora, yeah. where Jews have felt comfortable for decades, for centuries, and now, are feeling frightened. Yeah. Now we're asking, should I be wearing my yarmulke in public? Can this is, un God? This no. is unacceptable. No. Listen, we've been do dealing with this for a long time. I've been going to synagogue and synagogues in the neighborhood where I live, of course, have had security for a very long time. But this past Shabbat, we had heightened security. You got it. And we shouldn't have to live in an America yeah. that where people are feeling threatened because of their race, because of their faith, because of their identity, and if religious leaders don't speak out, no one will. Yeah, and I gotta, I gotta admit to you and to our listeners and viewers, there's a little pragmatic reason in here for us. Because as the old saying goes, they come after you, we're next. My phrase is, hate is an equal opportunity offender. Hate is contagious, and we're already seeing it. I was out at a, a parish on, St on Staten Island, a beautiful little Mexican humble parish, where the, the congregation was harassed, uh, the, they yelled invectives at the priest, they tried to desecrate the Eucharist, then they came back in the middle of the night and lopped the heads off two statues. That's hate, that's religious hate. We. It, if, if we don't preserve and defend the historic sanctuary that America has always been for religious freedom and religious uh, friendship, well, then we're going to let down ourselves and the world. What can we do? We're asking everyone who is watching this video to find an opportunity to meet with someone else. If you are a leader, do what Cardinal Dolan and I are doing. Sit down, make a video, say there is no place for this yeah. in New York. There's no place for this in the United States. There's no place for this in the world. Show us that there is outrage. Show us that you're in solidarity with the Jewish people and any people there you go. There to you which go. hate is directed. Yeah, I'll tell you this. I give any of my Catholic people permission and encouragement you want to visit the synagogue, you want to go up and say a prayer, you want to introduce yourself to the rabbi and congregation, be my guest. I'd be proud of you, okay? Because we need we need to stick together. Thank you very Thank much, you. Cardinal Dolan. All right, keep us posted, all right? Good.